the next reaction of, of alkenes, okay? Remember how I split these up into reactions of and preparation of each of the different types. We already talked about preparation yesterday and a little bit of the reactions. We're going to talk about some more reactions. You're going to see a common theme in these next two, which I'm going to have to explain by something called Markovnikov's rule, okay? Hydration. Now, again, most of these tell you what you're going to do. What do you think I'm going to ha is that going to happen to hydration? I'm going to add water in the presence of an acid in this case. And you get this whole thing. I, on your papers, have already filled in these things, these little uh, bonds that are connecting these guys and hydrogen's coming off of them. All right? And so what happens to this guy? Think of water as this. Think of H2O as HOH, where the H adds on to the one carbon, and the OH adds on to the other. It doesn't make any difference, although it will make a difference to the name of where that guy goes, and that's why I've got a larger space for you, and we're going to have two possibilities again. We're going to talk about that as we do this first example. All right, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to write the first example in. Um, all right, what is the first example? It's this guy. Remember, you're going to have two possibilities over here. I take my alkene, I react him with water in the presence of an acid, and I get two possibilities. In reality, you're going to find only one of them actually works, but I want to draw both of them here. What are the two possibilities? What can happen here? Where can that OH go? The OH can go either on this carbon, the first one, or the second one, right? See it? So if it goes on the second one, it would look like this. If it goes on the first one, it would look like this. Everybody agree? All right. And also notice another theme that's going to pop up all the time. This is another guy who, when you do it right, doesn't even need to be balanced. This happens a lot in organic. Remember how hard the balancing was in redox? That's not what's going to happen in organic. Very few of these even need to be balanced, and when they do, it's usually a two or something like that. Let's name these guys. Now, oh, this is a good point here. We haven't learned how to name. I'm going to actually give you on Monday when we get back. Um, I'm going to give you the rules for naming alcohols. That's what this guy is. When you put an OH on an alkane, you have made what's called an alcohol. We already know this guy's called an alkene because he has a double bond. We know alkynes. We've also added chlorines on there and fluorines and bromines and, 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 and branches. We know how to name all those. You don't technically know how to name this guy, but watch. I'll name him for you, and I'll bet you you'll be able to name him and pretty much anybody else. This guy is called 2-propanol. See what I did there? Can you figure out how you're going to name these based on that one guy? I bet you can, because it makes sense to you. you know, the, the system isn't that different for a new kind of compound. You've seen this two before. You know what that means. You know the OH must be what the two is referring to. You see a new suffix. It used to be alkanes would be A and E. Alkenes would be E and E. Alkynes would be Y and E. Now we got OL. We probably know that means there's an OH in there. Okay, so how do you think you would name that guy in the bottom? One propanol. One propanol, exactly. So it's really not that difficult. So is propen, is that like propene? Right. And the reason you have the A still there, there's no double bond. What if there had been a double bond in there? It would have been an E. You know, it would have had a number of that and put an E in there as well. So we'll, don't worry, we're not going to do those in, the, in this chapter. We're going to stick with just one guy at a time. Next chapter, we'll talk about when we have multiple things going on. We've got a chlorine, we've got a bromine, we've got an OH, we've got a double bond, we've got a whole bunch of stuff all in the same one. I'll talk about how you name those. But for right now, it'll just be one thing at a time in this chapter. All right, nice part about this is something similar happens to what we've seen before. Which do you think is the more likely product to occur? The two propanol. Because I've kind of seen that before with the double bonds. But something weird, even, even more uh, strange than that, you get 100% of this guy and zero of that, okay? None of this actually happens. Well, that's just more stable. And in the, in the case, in the case of um, when you're adding across a double bond, it is 
of the time, the group that you're adding is going to go more to, uh, given a choice, and he doesn't have a choice of anywhere in the, in, in the compound to go. Given a choice between these two carbons, he will take the guy who is more substituted, more, more, more other stuff on him, more towards the middle, every time, every single time. Not just 81% in 19 like we saw yesterday. Okay? And for that reason, we're no longer going to be drawing, I even told you then, I only want the predominant product. We're only going to, from now on, draw one answer, and that will be the dominant answer. In this case, the only answer, all right? And that is, in this case, 2 propanol. It's got a rule associated with it. If you look down at your paper, you'll see it. It's called Markovnikov's rule. I'm going to give that to you. I'm not going to be able to explain Markovnikov's rule until we do mechanisms. But you will be able to apply Markovnikov's rule starting today. And let me show you how with my next example, because you're going to see the same basic thing. Watch. This is addition of hydrogen halides. Okay, if you look at your notes, you already have the general formula. Notice the similarity between this guy and the one up above. All right? Now I'm going to erase the bottom of this because it's kind of written over the thing anyway. All right, so that's all I have to actually write. Don't you erase it. You keep both there. But um, let's look at this guy and see what, if you can predict what's going to happen in here. All right? As you can see, you take, this is HX. What does X stand for from yesterday? Any kind of chlorine, bromine, halogen. Any kind of halogen. Um, double bond, alkene. Let's take an example of this guy. Let's do uh, this one, butene. Plus HBr. Okay, try that guy. Butene plus HBr. One butene, actually. Yeah, right. Oh, and you know, that's a good point. I never did name, I should have, and you should go back up here and name this guy. This guy is one propane, right? You have to name everybody on both sides. Don't forget that on the worksheet you're going to get at the end of the period today. That's what? Water? Yeah, you don't have to name the water. You don't have to name the inorganic compound. I thought I might get a point there. You don't have to name HBR. Oh, I don't. You don't have to. You only have to name the organic compounds. Well, that's it is nice. All right, now here's my question. Can you predict what's going to happen in this case? What am I going to get? Am I going to get one bromo or two bromo? Tony bromo? Two, right. I'm going to get two bromo. And once again, you see another common theme. I don't need to balance this guy. And if you don't know why I don't need to balance this guy, you have to keep in mind, the way I'm drawing these, I'm kind of leaving out the H's, but they're there. This H goes on to this guy. That's why he has three coming off of now. And this bromine goes on to this guy right there. All right? You don't have to draw those arrows in there. All right, what's the name of this guy down here? One butene. Don't forget to put the number. One butene, because he could have been two butene. And this guy over here? Two bromo. All right, now, we have seen a very similar theme throughout. And I'm going to give you a name for it now. A name for this rule that applies to all these guys that when you're adding across a double bond. We'll explain the rule later. All right, but you have to know the rule to be able to do these. The rule is explained basically uh, by when we talk about the chapter on mechanisms which is the step-by-step -step process by which these things happen. How these guys actually break the bonds and, and form new ones. We're going to talk about that, but that's not till the next unit. All right, we're just doing the actual overall reactions today. So let's call this Markovnikov's rule. That's what it's called. And it basically says that a group adding across a double bond will go to the most substituted carbon possible. And I'll explain what I mean by substituted in a second. I'm actually going to have you draw the compound and then pick out what the, identify what each of the t different carbons are as far as substitutions are concerned, how much they have, how many other carbons they're bound to. So given a choice, the group, whether it's an OH or a bromine or a chlorine or whatever, is going to go on a tertiary first, then a secondary, and then a primary. What do those mean? I will show you with an example in a second.
degrees? Yeah, that little degree sign with a three before it means tertiary, and then secondary and primary. That's just an abbreviation for it. Now, let me show you what each of those means by drawing an example. Now, you should have room on your paper. I'm going to do it right here. I'll make a big one. But you guys should have room on your paper, a big empty white space right to the side here, I think, right? So draw this compound in that big empty white space to the side. Oops. Okay? Draw that guy. Somewhere to the side. You should have plenty of room there. Let's identify each of the carbons in there as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And what I'll do is I'll use different colors and different symbols. You obviously don't have different colors, so I will use uh, symbols as well. I'll circle the primary ones in red. You'll just circle them. I'll box the secondary carbons in blue, and I will put a triangle around the tertiary carbons in green. You don't have colors, but it'll still work for you. So put a little triangle, box, and circle around each of those. And now let's see what this guy gets. What does this guy get here? A, a box, a circle, or a triangle? triangle? This guy here, you think, is a tertiary carbon. Wait. No, 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 it's primary. It's a primary carbon because he's only bound to one other carbon. So I will circle him in red. Primary means he's bound to one other carbon. What about this guy right here? What's he going to be? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Secondary. Nope. Tertiary. tertiary. He's one. bound to oh, one, yeah. two, three other carbons. So I'll put a triangle around him. What about the guy above him? What's he? He's primary. He's only bound to one other carbon. See it? Getting the hang of this now? How about this guy right here? Tertiary. Because he's bound to one, two, three other carbons. Let's go down now. What about this guy down here? He is secondary. So I'll put a box around him. And the guy below him, he is primary. So I'll circle him. See what I'm saying here? Finish the last couple up there and see what you get. See if you get them right. Did you do that? Yeah. And you got them right. I will, on the test, on the, on the part of the test that is not the reaction part, I will have a problem just like that. I'll say box these, circle these, triangle these, and you'll have to do that. All right, but back to Markovnikov's rule. What will Markovnikov's rule say? Given a choice, a guy would rather go on a tertiary, then a secondary, and last choice is a primary. Now, he doesn't always have a choice. And by the way, some of you may be wondering, why don't I have quaternary? Why don't I have four? Well, if I had four around, there would be any room to add anything onto it? No. See, there wouldn't be any room to lose an H or have a double bond around him anyway. Now, back to uh, Markovnikov. Um, he would rather get on to a tertiary than a secondary and then a primary. Why? We'll explain later when we talk about mechanisms. You just have to realize that. Now, that's given a choice. For example, if I gave you a guy like this where the double bond is here, I know. If I got a guy like this, you might say to yourself, well, he wants to go here. I'll, I'll add the bromine here. I'll add the OH here. Can you do that? No, because the double bond is on these two. His choices are here or here, right? In reality, he actually has another one there because of resonance structures, but not a lot. And so we're going to basically say these two. These are your two choices. Where you can go. And then we want to choose the one that's closer. To where exactly. The choice would be, so be him. Yeah, yeah, he would want to go on that guy. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to uh, that. Basically covers most of the reactions of alkenes. Now, by the way, the total number of reactions we had were four reactions and I think three preparations. Not not by any means. If you look at an organic chemistry text, all of the reactions for alkene. There's way more. I could give you more, but we're obviously not going to cover everything here. All right. Let's talk about alkynes. Now, alkynes, I'm going to really shorten up. As you can see, I only have about a half, maybe a third of the paper is left for alkynes. 
We're going to shorten them up because alkynes are so similar to alkenes. Similar both in properties and in action. They do the same things as alkenes as well. Most every reaction I told, I will tell you about or have told you about alkenes, you can say about alkynes. Okay? And they are very similar. I'm going to show you one of the properties. Let me try to identify an unknown uh, for an alkene or an alkyne that is very similar as well when we do this little few hood um, demo in a minute. Okay? All right, so that's, the, you know, basically the properties are similar, so are the reactions. How do we prepare an alkyne? Well, I'm going to show you two ways here. One of them we already saw, cracking. Okay, you know what happens in cracking. Basically, look at the alkane reaction number three. If you break up an alkane into, a, into an alkene, you can break up an alkene and you can get an alkyne. You can crack that even, okay, and one, one step further. The next way is a very specific one I'm going to do my little demo on, and that's calcium carbide plus water. It only makes one particular alkyne. And the third one I will do an example of at the end of the period, but I want to do this little demo first, okay? Now, this guy right here, I'm going to set up for you all right, after I've done the demo. We're going to come back to it, so I'm going to stop the question. Here's your bones. You just saw me light the... Um, what was formed was acetylene on, on fire. Now, my bonus question to you is, can the first ones to get this completed and balanced will get points. I'm going to give you some hints, though. Three hints, really. You will be writing underneath this the formulas for each thing, and you will complete it. All right? You will complete it. So your job is to complete this equation with the correct formulas underneath it and the correct uh, names and formulas on this side as well. Here are your three hints. Number one, you kind of need to know this, and I don't think you would otherwise, because normally if I were to ask you what the charge of carbon is in a compound, you would probably say it was plus four or minus four. Um, in the case of calcium carbide, you have to assume the carbon's charge. Carbon's charge is a minus one in calcium carbide. Okay, To write car calcium carbide correctly, you'll need to know that. That's hint number one. Hint number two. You get two products over here, something plus something else. Okay, those are the two things that are formed, all right? All right, to, and then you have to write both of those things in. I'm not saying, like, in the ones we did before, somebody misunderstood that. Thought, they, they, there's two possibilities. I'm not saying there's two possibilities. There's only one possibility. Two products are formed when you add calcium carbide to water. Here's your second hint. All right, of those two products, all right, of those two products, you will know one of them by where this guy is located in your notes. And you'll know the other one by what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to add, oh, let me get in here for a second. I'm going to add some phenolphthalein to what you just saw me use, right? Okay. What does phenolphthalein do? Remember? You should remember. Well, if you don't remember, you're going to see it in a second. Okay. When I add this phenolphthalein into here, what does it do? Remember, it turns this really that real pink color you've seen before. Well, I added an awful lot, and it's got our junk in there, too. It's, it's the same pink color you've seen before. What does it mean? What does a pink color mean? Do you remember? It tells us whether something's an acid or a base. And pink for phenolphthalein meant it was a base. So that's your set your other product of the, of the two products, okay? One of them, you should figure out what he is because of where he is in the notes. The other one, you know he's basic. And that should give you a hint about what he is. So First one to get this done gets the points. Explain to you how this, how, what you should, the thought process that should have gone on in doing this equation. The first thing you should have done, like I said, was to complete the correct formula. And I gave you a hint on that. I told you carbon was minus one because it's the one thing you might not have known based on the periodic table where carbon is. So I told you that. So you know calcium carbide is CA and carbon is C. So it's, uh, you know, look up on the periodic table, calcium is obviously plus 2. Most people have that. Most people have, because I, I told you, C was minus 1 is minus 1. So you wrote CAC2, and that's correct. 
That's calcium carbide. Most people have that. Obviously, most people have water as H2O. I don't think anybody's going to get that wrong. Now, here come the two problems. First off, can I turn the yeah, you turn it off so you can hear better. All right, first off, I've got the notes, and I've got the fact that the other product is basic. The part that comes from the notes, this is number two under preparation of an alkyne. So somehow or other, one of my two products has to be an alkyne. How many carbons do I have to work with? Two. What's the simplest alkyne I can make between two carbons? Right? Which is what? Ethyne or acetylene. Okay? Ethyne. So that's where the notes came in. You had two carbons to work with. You know you have to have a guy with a triple bond. It's, otherwise, why would I have this as number two of preparation of an alkyne? And then the last thing was the fact that what's left over is basic. This is something that Jesse didn't pick up on. What's left over is a calcium and an oxygen and, and hydrogens. He just saw the calcium and oxygen, so he wrote just calcium oxide. It's calcium but it's calcium hydroxide because I told you I, this guy's basic, and it should be a real hint that things that are basic usually have OHs in them. Plus 2, minus 1, he gets CaOH2. Balance him. I've got 4 H's on this side, because remember, these are actually H's. And so you put a 2 in front of there, and he's all done. How about that? I was kind of... Uh, yeah, actually, you guys did better than the other class did. All right. Wait, wait. So if... I don't know. I have like CH right there to the left of the calcium. Well, again, just having CH. I know, but. I mean, that's not an alkyne. It can't be an alkyne unless you have at least two carbons. You have to have two carbons to be an alkyne. All right. All right. Now, let's do the last one, and then i got to give you your worksheets. Last one is all written out for you already up there. Very quickly, let's just do an example. See if you make any of the mistakes we've been talking about. Hopefully not. Platinum and nickel are your catalysts here. And this is kind of like, oh, by the way, I almost forgot there's an alkyne. It's a, sorry, well, I've got to erase one of those and make it into a triple bond here. Okay. Remember in the trans fatty acids articles we talked about hydrogenation, right? Catalytic hydrogenation, platinum and uh, nickel is a catalyst. You probably read about that. Okay. This is basically it. This is the reaction. You're going to add hydrogen across a double bond. In this case, you're adding, adding it across a triple bond. What are you going to get? Look at your general formula. What are you going to get? Rewrite it over there and see if you can name everybody. There's a couple of little mistakes we still make. We'll see. Now I can see, actually I think I see from here, a mistake that's being made. That's one mistake. What did I forget? Methyl. Yeah, I have a methyl group there. You can't forget to put that methyl group. You have to, however he's drawn over here, you got to draw him over here. All right. Here's another mistake that I didn't draw on it, but I could have. Some people take it all the way down to an alkane in one step. All right, You could actually do that if you wanted to put a 2 in front of here and just kind of assume that there are two things were happening. You're adding it across there. But um, if it only goes, if you're only adding one hydrogen onto there, it's only going to go to an alkene. I could actually take that alkene and hydrogenate it. You can look back in your notes. We did that. All right, But in this case, it just goes to the alkene, and now I have to name him, and I have to name him correctly. This guy over here... I have to name it from this side, from the right-hand side. One, two, three, four. Four methyl. One pentyne. Y'all get that? Yeah. Four methyl one pentyne. And this guy over here. Four methyl one pentene. All right. Dyer, I'm sure remembers this. I do. I'm actually, I saw it and I was like, you know, I should probably listen. Mm-hmm.